Hello, everyone, uh, and welcome to today's artist talk. Uh, I'm Natalia, Natalia Libidinskaya. I'm the program director here at the Vancouver Biennale, and it's my great pleasure to introduce Dina Goldstein, who is the Vancouver based photographer and visual artist um, whose work I've been following for years and years and years and she's worked with us in various capacities for years and years and she has um, an upcoming project on billboards here and hopefully an online exhibition on ephemera coming up soon as well and has shown uh, her large-scale narrative photography um, internationally and throughout Canada. I think I studied you in grad school, Dina. So um, I apologize, that is my phone. That's Over awesome. to you. Thanks, thanks. Hi everyone, I'm Dina Goldstein. I'm an artist working with large scale photography based in Vancouver, BC. I take iconic characters from popular culture and place them in alternate realities. And this is to examine uh, cultural uh, influences and inherent belief systems within contemporary society. I apply humor, irony, metaphor, and satire to my constructed realities, and I aspire to bring attention to our shared human, human condition and encourage empathy. I exhibit internationally at festivals, galleries, artist centers, and museums. Uh, the work can be enjoyed on several levels. Superficially, it can the work is colorful and there are many uh, details to take in uh, where you might have a laugh and move on. Or the viewer may want to spend more time and interpret the scene and the concept. Uh, they may or may not understand the allegory and the social commentary. Uh, they may or may not recognize the dark underbelly of the seemingly colorful image before them. Uh, and for those who connect with the piece, it may lead to further investigation, discourse, and debate. Ultimately, the work might be uh, disseminated within um, publications, in, within education, where the work is broken down and carefully examined. I began my career as a photojournalist and editorial photographer, and at the time I was shooting my own series with an interest um, of people living on the fringe, uh, people who display, displayed their individuality proudly. As an immigrant, I've always felt somewhat different than others, so I tend to gravitate to these kind of people. I spent uh, years at the local track documenting um, gamblers. After I became a mother and in 2005, I continued my career as an editorial photographer, um, but things were changing in the magazine world and the digital world and digital cameras were becoming more affordable and the quality of pictures was actually declining. At the same time, my mother was diagnosed with breast cancer, and that changed my path towards uh, fine art. At the time of my mother's diagnosis, my daughter um, um, appeared from daycare with a growing obsession for Disney princesses. And this unexpected, uninvited influence led me to think about uh, fictional characters and the idyllic happily ever after trope that was perpetuated by Disney. As an immigrant child, I missed a lot of Disney. And as an adult uh, with my daughter, Jordan, I began to read and take it all in. I quickly realized that the messages of these parables were being subverted. They were outdated, in my opinion, dangerous to young minds. Our reality not at all reflected in these versions of fairy tales that were originally meant to be dark, and cautionary tales. I began to imagine new outcomes for these female characters who would be struggling um, in the real world. Some of these concepts were controversial and may have unintentionally um, insulted some viewers, but all of them welcomed critical thinking and discourse. And even though not everyone agreed, it was the conversation itself that was important. And Fallen Princesses led the way to my current filmic methodology, where I continue to produce um, large bodies of work consisting of about 10 images. 
Uh, after the success of Fallen Princesses, I con continue to be inspired by my daughters um, and the influences of the unconscious collective or our common imagination. Um, I created a 10 piece sequential narrative that played out in a life size um, um, set that would um, play out this failing marriage of Barbie and Ken. Uh, and for this series, I could not rely on available locations, so I had to build a set. Um, I also began to document and film the process. And I produced behind the um, scenes videos so everybody could get an idea of my process. For In the Dollhouse uh, subverts the idealized lives uh, and marriage of these, the first sexualized dolls ever and critiques the myth of perfection. It all ends up with Ken discovering his authentic self as he steps out of Barbie's shadow and Barbie's fate is grim as she succumbs to an emotional breakdown and cuts off all of her golden locks. Unwittingly, my work was taking on its own life with a broad theme of disillusionment at its core. In 2012, I was awarded a residency to Mumbai, India, and that's when I was inspired to create my next series, Gods of Suburbia. I've always had an interest in uh, culture and religion, and in school, I was enamored by biblical stories and characters. I chose 10 religious figures from the major uh, belief systems in place, uh, humanizing them, having them instantly recognizable, and again, challenging them with a complex narrative. I know that I'm dealing with very sensitive issues, and in some cases, I could be putting my life in danger. In the case of Muhammad, I knew that it was important to include him in the series. And in this piece, I'm referring to the great cultural divide of the East and the West. In 2016, I decided to make a statement about materialism and commercialism. Uh, growing up in Vancouver, I witnessed my city evolving into an Asian hub with a vibrant Asian community, and I was very influenced by this. I was enamored by the 1930s advertising posters that featured beautiful girls advertising everything from soap to motor oil. These uh, posters were drawn and be with beautiful, intricate designs, and the push and pull of tradition and an expression of individuality has always been on my mind, having come from Israel where struggles still exist and divide people. The, this series was in two parts, satirical advertising posters with made up products and diptychs of girls in traditional garb, as well as their everyday looks. And I tackled various social um, issues, including the most relevant and important issue for humanity, the environment. I opened the Modern Girl Show in Paris in 2016. In 2018, I took my first commission from a museum to create snapshots from the Garden of Eden. And this is an 11, uh, uh, an, project with 11 images and included at the Contemporary Jewish Museum for the group show, Artist as Majid, the curator asked me to reinterpret and recreate classic Jewish fairy tales and characters. I sifted through a collection of a hundred stories dating back centuries and from all over the world and decided on 10 narratives where I continued with my methodology and this series would be monochromatic, black and white, to uh, differentiate it from my other works. Again, I took on this opportunity to discuss important issues, including mental health. My latest series, The Ten Commandments, features representatives of American presidents, and I coupled them with the laws of the Ten Commandments uh, the postulates that uh, still remain the foundations of modern of the, uh, our modern justice system, 
Uh, the series was a response to the election of, of businessman and obnoxious reality TV star Donald Trump, and which we all know his election underpinned the populist right wing movement that exposed an ideological division and dark elements that were brewing for our neighbors in the South. Um, with a unique pros, uh, perspective for Canada, I didn't shy away from the serious issues that were, was plaguing the states. And it was the first time that I created real historical characters instead of fictional ones. I cast all and photographed the presidents in Vancouver with pickup shots in New York City. And I addressed uh, issues like gun violence, school shootings, fake news, misinformation, increasing surveillance, money in politics, lack of care for the elderly, and more. I'm fortunate to have the assistance of a talented, uh, talented skeleton crew and cast and volunteers that come out to assist on my shoots and a loving sporting family. I apply for grants and I work with tiny budgets mainly derived from print sales. And I'm thankful to the few but important collectors who invest in my practice. Uh, for more information about uh, my work, you can visit my website, dinagoldstein.com. Uh, if you go to the Dig Deeper section, there's a variety of essays, dissertations, and clips. And you can see all the production videos that are up on my site. And if anyone has any questions, please feel free to email me and I'd be happy to answer. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I think I made it in 10 minutes. That's my whole career in 10 minutes. Hello?